So what is field weakening and how does it help motors spin faster? Short recap, field weakening is a technique used to achieve a higher speed at the expense of a lower torque. But how does it do that exactly? And does it actually weaken the field or lower the motor's torque constant? Let's take a step back. Why do we even need a technique to help us spin our motors faster? What's preventing us from spinning them faster? Well, the main culprit in permanent magnet motors are the magnets themselves. An electromotive force, also known as back EMF, which opposes the rotation, is induced in the stator coils due to Faraday's law of induction, as the magnetic field in the rotor passes through them. As we spin our motor faster, its back EMF increases, meaning it's opposing us more, which might become a problem. This is a diagram of a brushed DC motor. We have the supply voltage, which is the battery for example, and the controller, which determines what is the required driving voltage to reach the commanded current. The voltage on the phases, which will generate the current, is the difference between the driving voltage, which depends on the supply voltage and the controller, and the back EMF. The field weakening technique tries to tackle a scenario where the required driving voltage is higher than the supply voltage, which isn't possible. Now, before we try to debunk any misconceptions as the video title suggests, let's talk about how this technique works. I want to explain the field weakening technique using a simulation of a motor phase. This animation will be the simulation output. I'll run the simulation in several scenarios, and each time I'll show the back EMF, phase current, phase voltage, and driving voltage. And at the bottom here, I'll show changes in parameters, such as speed, or the current in the D and Q axes. I'll simulate the motor phase with a resistance of 0 0.1 ohms, and an inductance of 2 millihenry. And I'll set the back EMF constant to 0 0.5 volts to radians per second. I'll also set the initial speed to 50 Hz. I'm going to command a stator current of 100 amps and see what the required driving voltage is to reach that current. For now, I'll assume the stator current vector is entirely in the Q-axis, meaning it's perpendicular to the rotor's magnetic flux orientation. And for starters, I'll also ignore the back EMF. Okay, based on the impedance of the motor at this speed, this is the voltage needed to achieve the desired current amplitude. We see that the phase voltage and the driving voltage are identical, since there's no opposing back EMF. Now let's set the back EMF constant to a value of 0.5 volts to radians per second. What would you expect to happen to the driving and phase voltages? We now have a back EMF opposing us, so we need a higher driving voltage. However, the phase voltage remains exactly the same, since that's the voltage we need to reach our desired current. Let's see what happens when we spin the motor faster. We can see that the back EMF got larger, and so did the driving voltage. We can see that the phase voltage also increased a bit due to the increased impedance of the phase inductance. So we understand that even for motors without permanent magnets, such as reluctance motors, we'll also need to implement field weakening at high speeds. Okay, so we can clearly see that as we increase the speed, to achieve the same phase current, we would need a greater and greater driving voltage until it exceeded our supply voltage. Now let's try the field weakening technique. Let's see what happens to the driving voltage at a constant speed when we shift the stator current vector towards the negative D axis. We can see that the phase voltage is exactly the same, since the required voltage to achieve the desired current amplitude hasn't changed. However, the driving voltage is lower. That's because of the phase shift we created. When we align the stator current with the Q axis, we're essentially making sure that the current waveform is aligned with the back EMF waveform. I gave a short explanation on why that is in a different video. By shifting the stator current vector towards the negative D axis, we add phase between the phase voltage and the back EMF waveforms, thus requiring a lower driving voltage. The driving voltage has less opposition now. 
notice that the phase difference between the phase voltage and the phase current hasn't changed. That phase difference is a function of the speed and the motor parameters, specifically its resistance and inductance, and we can't change those. Okay, so now that we understand how field weakening works, let's go back to the misconception we talked about. Does field weakening, which pretty much means increasing the current in the negative d-axis, necessarily weaken the rotor's magnetic flux? I'm planning an experiment in an upcoming video which will debunk that misconception. But until I get to that, I think looking at the motor circle diagram of a surface-mounted permanent magnet motor will also do the trick. First, a short explanation on what we're seeing here. The x-axis is current in the d-axis, and the y-axis is current in the q-axis. So any point on the graph determines our current vector amplitude and angle. There are two limits which determine the limit of our current vector. First is the current limit, which is marked by the dashed circle. This determines our maximum current vector amplitude. And the second is the voltage limit. We can see several voltage limit circles here. Each circle signifies a different supply voltage or speed. The smaller the circle is, the higher the speed, or the lower the supply voltage. The voltage limit circles may also be ellipses in different motor types. We can also see the constant torque lines. If we choose a current vector that moves along one of those lines, our torque output will be constant. So we can understand from this diagram that for a given current in the q-axis, adding current in the d-axis won't have any effect on the torque, meaning it does not affect the motor's magnetic flux. Okay, now that we understand how field weakening works and we talked about the misconception, some questions might come to mind. First, is there a limit to how much we can shift the stator current towards the negative d-axis for field weakening to still work? And why don't we shift the stator current towards the positive d-axis? Let's take a look at a permanent magnet motor's steady state voltage equations to find the answer. The constants are the stator resistance, inductance, the electrical rotating speed, and the magnetic flux of the permanent magnets. All the constants are positive, and I'll also assume IQ is positive. To simplify the equation a bit, it's common practice to neglect the stator resistance, since it's usually not as significant. So let's get that out of the way. This part here represents the back EMF, and we can clearly see that adding a negative current in the d-axis will counteract it, whereas a positive current will only increase the required voltage. So, is there a limit to field weakening? Well, that depends on the motor design. The limit at which shifting the stator current towards the negative d-axis doesn't help with field weakening anymore is when ID equals the magnetic flux divided by the inductance. Because if we increase ID beyond that, VQ will start becoming negative and the voltage amplitude will start increasing, which is exactly the opposite of what we want. In some motors, however, this equality isn't practical because the required current is too high. So for those motors, we can continue shifting the current vector towards the negative d-axis and that'll keep lowering our voltage amplitude. In the motors where this equality is possible, well, firstly, we can theoretically reach infinite speed. Secondly, we have another method of operation. We pass initially from MTPA, or maximum torque per ampere, to field weakening, and then once we reach the limit of both the stator current and the supply voltage, we start the MTPV, or maximum torque per voltage method, which requires the lowering of the stator current vector along a specific path to allow for the peak torque at those increasing speeds. And this path depends on the motor type and design. So we understand that the ratio between the magnetic flux and the inductance is crucial in motor design. Here we have torque speed and power speed maps of a surface mounted permanent magnet motor with different normalized magnetic flux and inductance ratios. In applications where the most important feature is peak torque, we would want the magnetic flux to be much higher than the inductance. 
we see that the peak torque at lower speeds is high compared to the other ratios. However, the torque and power outputs fall drastically past the rated speed. That's because we reach voltage saturation and are unable to use field weakening to exceed that speed. We can go back to the voltage equations and see that a small inductance would mean that ID would have a negligible effect on the voltage amplitude compared to the magnetic flux. Now, in applications where a high speed is important, there is a theoretical sweet spot at which peak power is maintained at ever-increasing speeds. So as the speed increases, the torque decreases. If we decrease the flux to inductance ratio further, we would still get excellent field weakening properties. However, the peak power and torque would suffer. All right, that's it for this video. I'll leave links in the description to the Python script and some interesting resources I referenced to. And hopefully I'll be able to release the experiment video soon. Thanks for watching and see you next time.